go to so, drudgereport.com or infowars.com. There is the headline, man faces life in prison for recording police. And what's scary about this, talk about lawlessness, 12 states now will put you in jail or attempt to uh, if you film police in public, even at a city council meeting. And that's in the news report. He's facing life in prison. And the prosecutor and people said, we want to teach people a lesson. Now, understand, this is not wiretapping. This is not what the statute says. But people have been sent to jail for this. Most of these get thrown out. But in 12 states, the cops don't care. They will waste taxpayer money and ruin somebody's life just to try to create a chilling effect so people won't videotape police. And that is bona fide, naked tyranny at its worst right there. So we're going to be breaking that down more in the next hour. Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer, best-selling author, researcher, led the big unit that could have killed bin Laden. You've seen those reports. It's confirmed. Uh, Ten years ago, before 9-11. And uh, here he is today. And, of course, uh, he exposed able danger and so much more. Has a lot of courage. And he says we can say uh, here on air, but you uh, heard him earlier getting into the power grab that's happening. Uh, let's talk uh, about uh, these reports in Asia Times, L.A. Times, how al-Qaeda got to rule Tripoli. His name is Abdel Hakim Belhaj, and he uh, reportedly brags, and, and his cohorts brag, that they've been in Iraq uh, and that uh, it's confirmed that they are al-Qaeda assets and that it's not just a contingent, that the main group now getting funding and, and being protected in, in the majority of the areas they've taken, that the main group that's emerging as who is going to lead the government, and in a test would not offer to give back the uh, guy that bombed the Pan Am plane, who lied about dying of cancer and obviously right. isn't dead. I mean, that's another big symbol. They said they're bringing in Sharia law. The bags are going back on the heads. The same thing's happening in Egypt. They're going to kick out Assad, put jihadis in. I mean, what's going on here, Colonel? Well, I think we we, are, we have been dealing with the situation with a great deal of naive Dave, I, I think. I, the story you're talking about regarding the al-Qaeda guys, this has been mainstream media. I mean, I know Fox covered the fact that these guys had clear and direct links with al-Qaeda. So I'm not quite sure, again, what, what we're missing here. Uh, and several folks, to include uh, folks on the Hill, uh, took to task uh, Senator McCain when he went over there and said, these guys are, are all all right by me. It, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, the other thing about you have to understand about this, uh, Alex, is these guys, Al Qaeda guys, are very persistent. They they have a plan. It, I don't know if you ever saw the old battle battle the new Battlestar Galactica reimagined. You know, it's, it's kind of, they're kind of like the Cylons. They got a plan. They're moving forward with. Yeah, it. they're not going to stop. Yeah. I mean, they, but but here's the issue: give them Afghanistan after the end of the Soviet deal. Now give them Libya and all that money. What? what? Well, this is, this is where we have to be smarter about how we use our resources. We can't be everywhere constantly. Therefore, we have to be very careful about how we deal with this. We don't have to be physically everywhere to deal with these I know, but, but Colonel, yeah. uh, look, the, the Pentagon, you say, doesn't make sense. Use them against the Soviets, use them against the Serbs, use them to take our liberties here at home. It actually makes perfect sense. They've got to give al-Qaeda a new base and so they can blow them up in five years. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm not sure. If, I'm not into that strategy. But I do know that, that we've been ignoring things which are obvious. And one of the things we, we didn't take into account with Iraq is that Iraq turned out to be a hugely successful training ground for al-Qaeda. Yeah, we, we may be able to roll them back a little bit. But first off, you know, one of the things about Iraq, we haven't won there yet. I don't think people understand that. That is still, still a, a major combat. But that's operation. what you just, you're, you know, you're right. For those that don't know, most of these jihadis that are admitted al-Qaeda are veterans of eight years in Iraq, right. and they make comments like, I hate Americans, but I also hate Gaddafi. I mean, wh what is this? Well, you know, the West hates Gaddafi so much, they're going to give Libya to al-Qaeda. Stay there. Back in one minute, sir, so you can really flesh this out for us. But, uh, I mean, yeah, I've got to give my rights up because al-Qaeda is hiding under my table. But then meanwhile, i got to hear about al-Qaeda or freedom fighters. We'll be right back. He's the author of Operation Dark Heart, excellent book. Some of it got excised by the Pentagon. They didn't want you reading it. Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer, and he, during the one-minute break, he was getting into, look how fast Tripoli fell, U.S. troops involved, we're in the dark. Uh, Wolfowitz is the engineer of this. You got the floor in the last five minutes, Colonel. Take it away. Well, I just uh, I, one of my credible sources told me a while back that the real the real power that pushed us into this conflict was with well, two notable figures. One was uh, Samantha Powers, uh, one of the notable advisors to President Obama, and then also a, a shadowy figure which I was kind of surprised to hear about. But I, I, when you look at it, I guess it makes perfect sense. Is Paul Wolfowitz? Apparently, the two of them got together, did a memo which basically said, "Hey, we need to do something here," and. and 
And um, I think most folks understood going in that the humanitarian guise for the whole thing was a total sham. And so when you look at it, and, and the other thing to, for your, your audience to consider here is, you know, we've been watching this war for months, and, you know, we've been seeing these rebels who can ba barely even, you know, shoot an AK-47 uh, the right way without, you know, killing themselves. And, and it, it, all of a sudden they, they, they grow efficiency and are able to storm Tripoli and take it over. So what's wrong with this picture? I mean, you guys can see some of this in the shadows of the press if you look at, look at it very carefully. There's been rumor now that uh, certain special operations units of both uh, the, the British and, and possibly the U.S. were actually advising these guys, helping them to organize. So when you look on the face of it, you really do come to see that there, there's no way the rebels could have self-organized, moved in rapidly, and taken over the size uh, city the complex, with the complexity of, of Tripoli without some level of help. And so, again, this is where um, I'm concerned. I think everybody... Well, sir, concerned. it's now confirmed that um, a whole bunch of special forces from other Arab nations, the French... The British, the U.S., the night landing. And there's been videos and photos released of Anglos up there firing anti-tank guns and other systems. So there's now no doubt that they were used there. Yeah. Well, I just think we, we, <laughs> we've got to be smarter. I, I mean, I, I don't know why we're not thinking this through, and maybe we're, not, maybe we're purposely not thinking this through. Maybe there's something I don't understand. But from a military perspective, from look at, looking at this situation from a military perspective, there's two, two key things. First, if we really wanted to get this done, uh, we should have done it in, in, in a month with one armored brigade going in, cutting through, and being done. And frankly, we would have killed, less civilians would have died by us taking, taking direct action if, if, you, if you go in. And, and this, this goes to the, the Colin Powell comment to, to George Bush. If you break it, you own it. Well, we broke it, and we're not willing to own up to the fact that we've made, we've made situation bad. Secondly, and more importantly, Alex, is the fact that we really don't know what's going to happen next. And, and, and sometimes, I hate to say this, and some of my friends may get on me for this, but sometimes the devil you know is actually better than the devil you don't. Gaddafi was a lot of things, but if nothing else, he kind of stayed out of the, world, uh, the world's way. He, he gave goofy, long speeches at the U.N., but for the most part, he kind of knew what you were dealing with. Well, he'd also rolled over seven years ago, gave up the WMDs, started investing his money in Western banks. This sends a signal, you come in and out of the cold, we're going to betray you. Right. And, and this is where I think, uh, this, and, and of course, we, we ignore the fact that if, and we, should, we should have done something years ago if we're going to do something against him based on the things he did regarding Lockerbie and the bombings, the disco bombings in Germany. With that said, we've waited all this time, and now all of a sudden we're upset with him. It doesn't pass the common sense test. And this is where I think there's some other things that the American people need to be demanding that, that, that Congress look into. This, this, this screams for investigation, Alex. It, it really does. Well, now you talk about you break it, you own it. They admit most of the country, no power, water. Right. Uh, and, and it's a big population that was you know, uh, living in an industrialized system. And reportedly it is descending into it, a humanitarian nightmare, the very thing they claim the war was for. Exactly. And I said that, I said that a week ago on, on one of the programs on cable. I said we will see a, a descent into chaos because no one's really in charge and because of the, 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 the real objectives of the new group is not really to bring the country together. I think you're going to see a Bosnia-esque situation, a balkanization, if you will, of, of the environment. And it's just, it's just not going to be helpful for anybody. Colonel, I look forward to speaking to you in the near future, hopefully in the next few weeks, because this is unfolding and your analysis is uh, piercing. We'll talk to you again soon, author of Operation Dark Art. Take care, Colonel. Thanks, Alex. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get into the Gardasil shots in Mexico, police, uh, life in prison for filming them. Ron Paul's coming up. Stay with us. You don't need me to tell you that humanity is in a deep crisis. Everyone can feel it. We know a tectonic struggle is now taking place between the forces of freedom and those who love darkness, bondage, and enslavement. Yes, my friends, evil is rising. But take heart, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Recently, New World Order operative Hillary Clinton admitted they're losing the info war. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. The globalists are scared. They've overreached. The future of the info war is in your hands. Join PrisonPlanet.tv. Download the thousands of special video reports, ebooks, and more, and get them out to everyone you know. Continue to spread the word about the broadcast on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and every other globalist propaganda platform. We are going to use their system against them. The info war now goes into high gear.